Reagan revolution and the man who made this country what we're enjoying today. Well, with Murdoch and to Dave's sons, David Jr. and Justin, and the Judds for that wonderful music. And, And for all they're doing this year for our party here in California, I thought I want to thank as well our state chairman, Bob Naylor, our, our leader in the state senate, Ken Maddie, and the next speaker of the California Assembly, Pat Nolan. Well. We all know, and you've shown it here today with your generosity, that California is an important state in any election year, but especially this year. Yes, this year, California could decide if America will return to the era of tax and spend liberalism, or if a strong, determined leader will have the chance to build on our legacy of peace through strength and prosperity through liberty, a strong, determined leader named George Bush. But, but crucial as it is to elect President George Bush and Dan Quayle, that's not all California can do this year. This year, California may also decide if President Bush will have a Senate that works with him or against him. And if what a certain senator has achieved in the last six years isn't reason enough. Returning the Senate to the Republican column is another big reason to pull out all the stops and make sure that California and the nation get six more years of service from one of the Senate's best, Pete Wilson, who's here with us today. And California can also help America give President Bush something I sure wish I'd had these last few years a House of Representatives that can't override presidential vetoes. <laughs> and one last thing California can do, after the 84 election, we had a little saying around the White House, as goes Minnesota, so goes the District of Columbia. <laughs> well, this year, as goes the California legislature, so could go the House of Representatives. Most of the legislators, elected this time will decide the next congressional district lines. Our current lines were deliberately drawn to frustrate the will of the people. Very simply, what gerrymandering amounts to is squeezing all the Republicans you can into as few a districts as you can, knowing you're giving those districts to the Republicans, but then spreading them out for the other party to be able to elect a majority of the legislators. And our current lines, as I say, were deliberately drawn to frustrate the will of the people. The creative genius who drew them, at Congressman uh, uh, Burton, called them his contribution to modern art. 
1984, California Republicans, listen to these figures, won 50% of the votes cast for House candidates, for congressmen in Washington. But we walked away with only 40% of the seats. Fairly drawn lines would mean more seats for Republicans, and combined with the changes we are hoping for in other states, that change could make the difference in Washington, and that could change the course of the nation and the world. Do you realize that for more than half a century, the Democrats have drawn every 10 years the district lines for state legislators and for members of the Congress? As a matter of fact, in the last 56 years, for 52 of those 56 years, the Democrats have controlled the House of Representatives. For 46 of those years, they've controlled both houses of the Congress. And there are other figures about this that are, are just astounding. Because out of those 56 years also, 48 of those years with those Democratic Congresses, we ran deficits. So when I hear that fellow what's-his-name from Massachusetts talking about my deficit spending, the president can't spend a dime. Only Congress can spend the money. And they, for a half a century or so, have been in charge of running deficits. Beginning in 1965, those were the years when Johnson put into effect the war on poverty. Poverty won. The, in the 15 years, in the 15 years from 1965 to 1980, when we ran and won the election there, in those 15 years, the federal budget increased to five times what it had been, and the budget deficit increased to 52 times what it had been. So I want that guy from Massachusetts to shut up about who's responsible. Well, no, I wish he'd really tell who's responsible for the deficit. But you're the ones whose support will make victory possible for George Bush and Dan Quayle, for Pete Wilson, and for our candidates in the House and the legislature. And sometimes we tend to overlook that, how very important those state legislatures are, because in just a year or two, we will be redistricting, reapportioning the districts again. And let's us be in charge this time and do our own job of modern art. Uh, now, well, Nancy and I just want you to know how grateful we are to all of you. This campaign is something special to me, not only because it's the last campaign of my presidency, and not only because our candidate for my job is a friend and colleague who has my trust and confidence, but because all we've worked to build these last eight years can become a lasting legacy or be undone in a twinkling. So this depends on the outcome in November. So thank you for helping us make sure that America remains strong and free, proud and brave, a light unto the nations for the ages. And now I got to get back in that whirly bird that brought us here and Nancy and I have to go up to Santa Barbara and do much the same thing for a bunch of people up there and Congressman Bob Largamasino. He's now our congressman since that's where our ranch is. But uh, I tell you, it's been just a great pleasure and a delight to be here. And I think, as I say, we're all indebted to these talented people up here for the entertainment, but we're doubly indebted for the man who made that possible and who brought us all together here in this beautiful place, Dave Murdoch. Thank you all very much.